Okay, we'll go ahead and call the Cattle Parish, Cattle Parish Commission regular meeting uh, to order at this time, April 3rd, 2014. If, um, Mr. Clark, if you'll give us the roll call, please. Dominic, Johnson, Present. Williams, Here. Lynn, Bowman, Here. Baker, Lynch, Here. Escadet, Thibodeau, Here. Cox, no. Smith, Everett. <laughs> yeah. We have a quorum, Mr. We'll have the uh, invocation by uh, Pastor Eddie Howard from the Faith Christian Assembly Baptist Church uh, Vivian, and we will have the pledge by Commissioner Cox. If uh, uh, Pastor Howard, if you'll come up and lead us in the invitation, we appreciate you being here today. Amen. I'm Don't glad to be here. Bad about us, North Cato boys. Uh, uh, North Cato is the no, greatest you, place. Yeah, to be. <laughs> you I got about 20 girls going to jump on your back. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm proud of them. Let's bow our head and go to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we come today, Lord, giving thanks to you for allowing us to assemble together to conduct this business. Lord, we thank you for the leaders that has been empowered, Lord, by the people to trust and believe in them for sound judgment. Yes. Lord, we ask to let your spirit be with them. <laughs> trust them, lead them, guide them, Lord. And we thank you right now for Caddo Parish, Lord, and the decisions that they have already made. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. 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 Would everybody please face the flag, give the proper salute, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Howard, again, I appreciate you coming. Hope you get to stay at least a little while. We're going to have a presentation to the North Caddo high school girls in a few minutes um, <coughs> if y'all just hang tight we do have a few other things to go over uh, mr. clerk next item please uh, next we move to agenda additions we have one agenda addition by Commissioner Lynch uh, yes I want to add to the agenda a motion to add to the agenda a resolution recognizing April is National County Government Month second, second. second. have a motion uh, by Commissioner Lynch, seconded by Commissioner Epperson to add to the agenda a matter uh, be added um, to, I guess, new business concerning um, National Government Month. Uh, we please vote at this time to expand the agenda. Show of hands. We've got pollen. If you'll please vote now. Okay, and that passes 12 to 0. Now I have a motion by Commissioner Lynch to add it to the agenda. Is that correct? We'll move it under special resolution. Okay. I have a motion by Commissioner Lynch and yes. seconded by Commissioner Epperson to add it to the agenda under new business. Can we please vote? Good chair. Chair. And that passes 12 to 0. Yes, sir, you have well, I, I have an item on the agenda to expand the agenda with uh, Ms. Helen Gawker here regarding the Lady Long resolution. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to add it to the agenda to we hear what she had to say. Well, we're in favor of opposition. I would say we add it into under new business, which will come in after after she, she makes her presentation. She's going to make a presentation under citizens' comments. All right. So I have a motion by Commissioner Williams, seconded by Commissioner Baker, to expand the agenda concerning the resolution regarding the interest of payday loans. Uh, can we please vote to expand the agenda on this at this time? And that passes. And now we need a motion and a second to place that matter under new business. Have a motion by Commissioner Williams, seconded by Commissioner Baker. To place that matter under new business and can we please vote at this time and that passes uh, next item mr. clerk next we move to citizen comments citizens who wish to address the Commission on any issue other than zoning please fill out a comment card located in the chamber foyer and return it to myself or the clerk of the Commission individual comments are limited to three minutes uh, I do have two two cards at this time and uh, if anybody wishes to um, speak uh, that uh, as citizen comments please fill out a card our first speaker will be Elton Taylor senior mr. Taylor if you can come up to the microphone to the podium we appreciate it if you can give us your 
once you get up there, give us your name and address, and uh, please um, you can make your comments. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I would like to thank the board as well for allowing us this opportunity to speak before you all. My name is Alton Taylor, and the first year was out at 2200 Milam Street here in Shreveport, Louisiana, and I'm the executive director. What we want to present before you today is to explain our program and the impact that it has had on the community and as well as our young people. But first of all, the background and the capacity of this organization, the mission of the first tier of Northwest Louisiana is to provide the lives of young people by providing educational programs that build character, instill life enhancing values, promote healthy choices through the game of golf. This organization was established in 2002. Uh, we have a total of 31 board members which include officers, board members, advisory board members, program directors, PG instructor, tutors, and counselors. For over the last three years, our main goal was to provide lifelong skills through the game of golf. We use golf as a vehicle to introduce kids uh, to the program, but at the same time, we try to provide other values to them. We were blessed to receive some funding last year from the Community Development and the UPS Foundation to jumpstart our after-school tutoring and ACT prep program. As of the present, we had our first round of ACT uh, students, which was about 12, and out of the 12, every last one of them scored above the parish level on the second round of testing. And so we had to introduce another class, which is taking place right now. So we are making an impact, I think, in young people's lives at the same time. We're also providing faster training for the parents. We have a, a counselor that comes in, sit down, talk with the parents, to help them file faster so these kids can qualify for some type of federal aid or grants throughout the state of Louisiana or schools that they choose to desire to attend. <coughs> Excuse me. This, uh, the project plan is to place, uh, as we speak right now, we're providing nutrition and snack, mentoring, tutoring, ACT prep classes to our young people through the life skills and the golf program. And we would like to continue this. Right now, we are ending our spring session and our funds are running out, but we see a need where we are, where the kids are with deficient in the English, math, English, compre English comprehension and reading. And so our goal was to try to make an improvement with those students so they can test well throughout the, the parish, the different schools, and to make sure that we are providing the best opportunity for them to be successful. Hopefully and prayerfully, that if we receive the extra funding, we would definitely like to continue this program through the summer, offer our computer classes, as well as ACT prep through the spring, summer, and as well as the fall of 2014, and hopefully the early spring of 2015. So again, we do appreciate the opportunity uh, for allowing us to speak, and at this time, I would just like to introduce, let me introduce, we have my board stand up. We're here to support me in this effort. Our board president, raise your hand, man and board members and coaches. So again, we do appreciate it and prayerfully that uh, you will consider our request. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. 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 Chairman. No, questions? I know, we, I know we can't ask any questions. Right. Okay. I, I, I would simply ask you, if you have not already done that, to contact our legal department uh, uh, concerning application of the um, um, that we have where you might be able to get some funding. If you'll contact Ms. Donna, um, Donna, Donna, Donna if you'll give them you know. your card maybe or give them your number real quick uh, concerning you know possible funding if you have any available I'll tell you how how to go about doing that okay I do appreciate it thank you very thank much thank you very much okay um, the next the next person to speak is Miss Smith Helen Godfrey Smith another North Caddo person up here today will be North Caddo day yes, and it very it proud of it <laughs> Can you please give us your name and address, please? Helen Godfrey Smith, P.O. Box 32, Gillum, Louisiana. There you go. Don't laugh. <laughs> and Miss Priest here also. And Miss Priest is my uh, on our board of directors at Shreveport Federal Credit Union, and she I wanted her to stand here. She lived on Kennedy Street with me. She that means she come off a good street. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Go ahead, Ms. Helen. I would like to first thank the commissioners for allowing me the privilege to stand today to speak to you related to an issue that is prevalent in our parish, uh, most especially here in the urban area of Shreveport. 
but not just in Shreveport, in other areas of the parish also. And it is related to the proliferation of payday loan stores. And I feel a little uncomfortable standing here because I am the CEO of Shreveport Federal Credit Union. I would not like for you to think that this has anything to do with my fear of competition at all. I am here on behalf of the citizens of Caddo Parish only on behalf of the citizens of Cattle Parish. Our business is not threatened in any way by the loan stores. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that being said, I'd like to share with you that there are bills now being heard in our state legislature related to capping the interest rate on loans that payday lenders can make in our state. And they are wanting to cap the interest rate at 36%. I will share with you that the payday lenders will say that they cannot maintain their business with such a low cap. But I offer to you that credit unions all over this country is limited to a maximum interest rate of 18% by federal law. Usually laws. And we manage to run very successful, very good businesses. So if we don't make the billions of dollars on the backs of the people that the payday lenders do. But we do, we, they can survive at 36%. I don't know how many of you know how the payday loans work, but generally they are limited to about $350 and they get, have to give a paycheck. Well, that paycheck generally will hurt them because it causes the poor people that go to payday loans or lenders to lose their bank accounts because they, there's another charge in addition to the $50 it takes to renew that loan every two weeks. Then they pay $25 to $50 in NSF check charges so that one $350 loan could cost, within 30 days, could cost that particular person upwards of $100 or $150. And it is robbing the people who can least afford it yes. of the ability to build wealth and to maintain their families. Because once they spend their paycheck with the 350, then the next payday, they can't cover the check. So the only way they can keep from going to the DA is to keep renewing at $50 every two weeks. So over the course of a year, that one loan could cost a uh, person up to five or $600. And they still would owe the $350. What happens is, as they renew, they generally end up having to go to more than one. The Consumer Financial Pr Protection Bureau just did a survey that says four out of five of those loans are rolled over. So the repetitiveness of the loans is a problem and the high interest rate. The interest rate generally tabulates out at four to five hundred percent per year, APR. We believe that uh, it is just fair that uh, as our state lawmakers do other things like require us to wear seat belts because it's the good public policy and it's for the good of the people that they also should limit the abuse that payday loan people can bring to people in our community. And one last point, loan sharking is illegal in Louisiana punishable by up to uh, 10 years or ten and $10,000 fine, but payday loan stores have been exempted from loan sharking laws, thus they have no limits as to what they can charge in interest and fees. And it is a scourge upon our community, and it is hurting the people that can least afford it. And I ask you, as a commissioner, a uh, body of commissioners today, to support the 36% interest rate cap. I will be in Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge on Monday speaking before the House Commerce Committee in support of the, uh, the House lowering that cap. And I would love to have a letter or resolution from this local body saying that of the 78 stores that are in Shreveport and Bossier, they won't be negatively affected to the point of going out of business, I don't believe. Thank you all so much for having me and listening to me, and I would entertain any questions. Um, hang on a second. If I'm just correct, what you're asking us to just simply pass a resolution um, 
supporting the passage of the current bill house 239 yes okay. sir. yes sir um, normally we don't have um, questions but um, since it's a little bit out of order since we do have a resolution does anybody have any questions I see Commissioner Lynch and Commissioner Williams are y'all wanting to ask questions or are you up there earlier I was up there earlier well I just thank you Williams, Williams, I, you, have, I, you have a question I just want to uh, thank you for uh, coming informing us of the uh, of the industry of the industry of this uh, <clears throat> industry in our community and we recognize uh, how everybody preys on the poor people and you know being 21% uh, uh, below the poverty rate the national rate is 14% you have a lot of unemployment a lot of high school dropout a lot of ignorance and a lot of people are posting these up in our particular community because they know people are living like you said from paycheck to paycheck so I, I would uh, definitely be supporting uh, the, uh, what you're uh, brought before us and uh, report is not on the agenda today but it should have been but however we had did vote to amend our agenda under new business to add it so we will be bringing it up to support what you're doing so thank you for keeping us informed because everybody needs to stay in that lane this is not what we do but we see it every day so thank you for bringing it to our attention and uh, we appreciate what you've been doing throughout northwest Louisiana and for our state and for our country I appreciate the work that you're doing in our community. And I will close with there are 18 states that have uh, set laws that would limit or ban payday lending because of the harm that it has done to the economies of those states. There's an additional four that have significantly limited their ability to flagrantly abuse their citizenry. So we ask you to help us to just make a dent in the billions of dollars that they are dragging out of our state every year. Thank you, Ms. Ellen. Thank you for coming. Uh, Commissioner Eskiday, do you have something? Yeah, I I'm have sorry. a couple of questions. Let me ask you something, too. Um, has any state uh, uh, enacted laws that regulate this that have been in action long enough for you to be able to quantify what impact it had on the industry in the state? The first thing that I would say is that the U.S. government uh, banned what created a cap of 36% for any payday loan that would be made to a military family in 2007. So that was one move. And the other states generally have adopted the 36%. The states that adopted the cap, they still have the industry in their states, in most cases, they uh, some of the stores possibly will close. There won't be quite as many, but they are still able to do business within the uh, community. Okay, so it didn't. There's no state that actually killed that whole industry. North Carolina is one that actually banned. There are about, I believe, six states that have actually banned payday loan and payday lending institutions. Period. Given the fact that, that you know. I agree with you. This is not good. It's predatory. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it's, 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 and it's only a problem when people can't make their obligation. Okay? Yes. And usually they show up because they're in a bind in the yes. first place and they have no, all, all over, no other alternative. And I see where it doesn't conflict with your business because you don't take high-risk loans. And that's what these are, high-risk loans. Mm -hmm. And they basically have nowhere to turn. Mm -hmm. So in the state of Georgia, you said they banned it? The state of Georgia has significantly limited. It's North Carolina that have banned. Okay. What's the solution? Because... I'm glad you asked. Well, well, let me, let me oh, go ahead. Finish the question. Because you want to stop them from preying on people, but at the same time, this is an option of last resort for some people, and yes, if this it goes is. away, then where did they go? That need's not going away. Somebody has to go, and they need a $250 payday loan because they need food or formula or something for their sick child, their baby or something. They've got nowhere else to turn. And if they don't get it from them, they're not getting it. So what mechanisms do we have or have you thought of in place to, to, to take care of that? Well, uh, I will say for sure that this is lending that we do. But with us, we don't just do it as a, we do $300,000, $500,000 loan, and we can serve anybody in our parish. So we can do the lending, but we can't do it with no risk management, no credit reports. Well, and I that. understand that. And you can't okay, do let, it right then. And I understand. And, and so 
there is an option. Before 1993, this was not even a product. It was, it became a product because of the need. And there will still be the need. And that's why I do not advocate that we ban payday lenders from our state. But I do think that we owe it to citizens who are not educated and are not literate enough to make some decisions so that they are not abused, similar to the way we do other things. Uh, seat belts, for one. Uh, no text and wild. take care of that other problem so people will be educated enough to be able to handle the future. They don't I'm patiently waiting. So, so I, there is a need for the short term loan, but it should not be allowed. We should not allow them to be subject to loan sharking and uncontrolled I understand. I interest. I totally agree with you. I have okay. one final question. Do, have, have, is there any data uh, that has, estimates the M if this legislation is passed that will estimate the impact on the state of Louisiana. Yes, there is, and I. Uh, this was sort of a quick uh, uh, appearance Tell me today. Off the top of your head, what you I know. can. There are fifty-seven thousand families that uh, make payday loans in the state of Louisiana, and at the cost of roughly two to three hundred dollars as a minimum per family. That's the money that could come back into households in Louisiana. Now, as far as what the payday lenders make, it is a $1.6 billion industry in our state. Wow. Really? Well, thank you for bringing this to us. Thank you. One more, Commissioner. Commissioner Koss, you have a question? Yeah, I can see both sides of this. And, too. you know, I've talked to people in my, that have done this. I'll be honest with you, I've done it. You know, because when you need 300 you got to have it. Yes. Going to a bank takes seven days. Yes. So unless your your industry has a fix for this, this is not going away. And the people need to be educated. We always talk about education to the people. Well, whether you're in uh, mid middle uh, middle class or low lower class, it's not that we're going to take that that service away from you. Now I'll agree that the interest rate is probably way too high. But is that going to cure the problem? I don't think so because people are going to go to those payday loans because when you have you got a car that's broke down and you need transportation you ain't got no money they're taking a chance by giving you that money and they can take you to court afterwards if you don't pay it right okay so it's not only the the one who's taking out the loan it's the loan organization who's also taking a risk so that, while that risk is still there, this is going to be alive and well in the state of Louisiana. And it will be, and, and we don't mind the, them operating because we believe that this is a need that should be met. But as uh, the reason that other <coughs> institutions have limited interest that they can charge is because of the usurious uh, manner which, in which some businesses operate. And we don't think it's fair to our citizenry that they should be subjected to the high fees and the abusive number of times that a loan can roll over. Right. When you take one person's paycheck that makes $15,000 a year, they can't make that up. And so they end I up. Agree, I agree with you totally. <laughs> what I would do, and to, to get support for this even better, go to the Times and have them do an in-depth report on this and make it on the front page. If they can put, if you're not going to get the OPEC or, or Exxon to lower their prices when they can, when they're making billions of dollars sure. off, off a tank of gas, they will not look twice at this. This is just a problem that's going to be swept under the rug. Right. They may vote it down in Baton Rouge, but it's not going to change unless we do or you do education to the people who are at, at these places every week. Lillian Priest. Uh, 2613 Parham Drive, Shreveport. <laughs> I'm following these instructions. Oh, okay. <laughs> Parham Drive. Uh, I think that's one of the things that uh, at Shreveport Federal, we have basically somewhat undertaken what you were talking about with the education. We do uh, offer a lot of the financial uh, literacy uh, programs, you know, for people who come to us, not only just say our members, but we've had the opportunity to service a lot some of the individuals who've actually uh, gotten loans from payday lenders and they are at the point where 
there's nowhere else to go and we've actually put them into a situation mm -hmm. where we've been able to provide some education for them and also to provide some workout solutions for them. So, you know, we're, we're there. What we're asking is that there's a cap and what we're going to do is our part and that is to educate and that is to try to be able to provide the service uh, to those individuals. Uh, and when you look at uh, an industry and just say in, I know we can't do anything about Bossier necessarily right here, but when you're talking about cattle Bossier and you're talking about 78 heyday lending institutions mm -hmm. in that Satur area, that's a saturation. <laughs> and so I think that in itself, otherwise it's going to just continue to snowball. Between Jewel and Mansfield Road, we've got seven in Southern Hills. And they're all over. It used to be where you would see them only in certain neighborhoods, but now you can drive almost anywhere and you see them. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Well, <coughs> Thank you all so much. Good. Two more commissioners, I'm sorry. Oh. Commissioner Lynch, do you have anything? Well, while we're out of order. Yes. I don't have a question. Well, my question is not to, to Ms. Priest and, and Ms. Godfrey, but we do we have a, a sample of the resolution or exactly what it's going to say? We don't even have a copy of the bill. We do not have a copy of the resolution. Um, the thing on that is uh, when I talked to Donna, she would say that we would have to kind of basically say that the uh, we're uh, passing a resolution requesting and supporting House Bill uh, 239 with the understanding that it will be drafted and uh, perused and agreed upon by our legal department. I would be happy to draft the sample resolution. I have a copy of the actual legislation here uh, that could be copied and passed around and maybe you not, we may not be prepared today. If it, but if it passes today, uh, what I would suggest, maybe go ahead and give it to uh, Ms. Frazier so she can have that because she will be preparing the resolution and wording it in the appropriate legal terms, okay? So, Thank you. so let me make sure. So in earnest, because there's some other changes here that they're asking for in addition to the cap, but the particular part of it that we're, I guess, kind of focused on is the cap. Yes, yes, Miss, uh, yes, Stephanie. We would. Uh, they want to uh, amend it to allow uh, the loan to be. It can only be to limit the number of times that the loan can be rolled over in one year to ten, mm -hmm. and that's. It's not a fair solution because that is not going to, I mean, that means one $350 loan could be rolled over 10 times to the tune of five to $600 in cost per year. So we don't think that's the solution. We think the cap of interest, and keep in mind the fees and the interest that's charged on a loan legally has to be considered in the interest. So they can't call a fee, uh, it, they can't take the interest and put, call it a fee and it not be considered annual percentage rate. And that's why the rates are so high. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Bowman, did you have anything? Yes, sir. I'll make it short. Uh, she kind of took what I was going to say. Um, I have the same concern, but I stand support of what you're doing because it is ridiculous. It's like going to a convenience store and you can go, uh, they may uh, sell your bread for $2.50 when you can go down to the grocery store for 99 cent and then you're looking at it's, it's convenience versus now crime mm -hmm. you know there's no sense of having to pay 800 percent apr interest versus 36 percent at least you no know, we can't um eliminate the payday loan people but at least we can put that cap on them to make them be accountable for what they're doing to the community absolutely accountable to the people in the community that's, right. that's all we're asking them to be Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Clerk, next item. We have no visitors. We move to special resolutions. Special resolution of recognition to the North Cattle Magnet High Lady Rebels, 2A Ladies Basketball State Champions. Everybody Come on, Seth. Rise. Everybody rise. Rise. <laughs> Resolution of recognition of North Cattle Magnet High State 2A champs. Whereas the Cattle Parish Commission has observed with pride and satisfaction as the Lady Rebels of North Cattle Magnet High have worked to build an incredible dominance in girls 2A basketball during the past few years, 
And whereas the Lady Rebels have emerged as state champions of high school class 2A, having conquered the Doyle Lady Tigers in the championship game of the Sweet 16 in Lake Charles on March 7th. In the game, the Lady Reb Rebels ran roughshod over the undermanned Tigers with a final score 80 to 46. The win gave the Lady Rebels a 34-1 season record as well as a successful 2A crown, along with the distinction of having 2A tournament most valuable player, Laditra Shepard, or DD, and whereas under the steady leadership of coaches Angela Chanel and Ricky Evans, the Lady Rebels developed a mature, determined approach to their game, an approach was, which was augmented by their innate athleticism, their focus, their commitment, and their pride. The result was a team that calmly and steadily did what they needed to do to win their games, culminating in a nearly flawless season and the 2A championship. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cattle Parish Commission, meaning legal and regular session this third day of April, that it does hereby heartily commend and congratulate <coughs> coaches Chanel and Evans and the team members of the North Cattle Magnet Lady Rebels for the continuance of their winning tradition and their devotion to excellence and for the splendid manner in which they represent their parish. Be it further resolved that the commission does wish for the North Cattle Lady Rebels much continued success in the game of basketball as well in the business as in the business of life for which their teamwork experiences have so successfully helped to prepare them. Signed, Douglas Dominic, President, Lyndon Johnson, Vice President. Um, so moved. Second. As it the um, <clears throat> half by affirmation, please. And I'd like to talk just for a few minutes. Um, uh, all of my years, I don't remember or recall North Cattle High School um, actually winning a state championship. We're the first in girls. First in girls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our town. <laughs> For our town and our area that you represent our town of Vivian and Caddo Parish and we are so so proud of y'all here at the Commission you just don't realize the people are so proud of y'all going from our City Council and our Mayor and all the citizens y'all's parents and your coaches and all your fellow students we're so proud of y'all in North Caddo and we're just waiting to be here next year for that number two okay right. Angela you Repeat. want to say anything? Thibodeau said he was a coach <laughs> Um, just thank you to the parish and to the commission itself for bringing us here today to congratulate us. It has been a whirlwind for us, especially this season, but especially this last month or so. And it's been an honor for us to represent not only Vivian, but also the parish, knowing that we were one of the last ones standing when it got there and when we went, and to be able to bring back the trophy, um, especially again as a first for us and girls for North Caddo, but also for the parish being the only one that was left. So thank you. MVP. <laughs> She's right there. She Come on, sis. Like, Come on, Dee Dee. You want to talk? You got to get She's used to this. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody else want to say anything for the behalf of the hey. We got a little Wayne back there. <laughs> <laughs> hey. It's the cow. Why don't you come up here and show us? At least show us y'all's trophy. So we'll go take a quick picture here. Can you, uh, Gerald, can you get us all in here? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> For the group that does the nay nay for the news, you would think that they would. Look here. Yeah. Thank you for making them speak. <laughs> My name is Summer Williams and I'm Star And this is my great niece and I'm very proud of her. <laughs> of my basketball team in the day so she's got deep roots <laughs> <laughs> and while they come up here I can tell you we are missing um, two today they had a softball game in the small community you know they play multiple sports and out of this group that you see before you only two are seniors wow. the other two at the softball game are three seniors. so these ladies will be back next year all right
Okay, go ahead. Um, Jasmine Thomas, number four, point guard. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Dee Dee Shep. I'm number three. I play shooting guard. Dee Dee. <laughs> Can we text it? Y'all to talk on this here. Can we? <laughs> Next. Come on. It doesn't matter. Just get up there. Coach. Coach. I'm Kiara, number post. Yeah. Oh, they're so sweet. <laughs> 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 Somebody. Do we have to turn on music? I'll introduce my team. Y'all want me to. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is Shanice Buffin. This is Kiara Easter. Post. Shooting guard. Marvin. We call him Mari. Her name is Revisia. He plays Post. This is Alexandria. We call her Nene. That's why we did that dance. Yeah. <laughs> she plays guard. This is Shakar Winslow. She plays guard. Sweetly, she already introduced herself. This is our manager, the best manager. Yay! <laughs> My coach, Angela. And, you know, so this is an uh, alumni, uh, class 2012. She played ball with me my sophomore and freshman year. I'm a senior. But, uh, yeah, she came back to help us, you know, little words of encouragement. But this right. is the Narcato Lady Rebels. <laughs> Now you're you're a senior, right? Yes, sir. So you have a scholarship to go where? Magny State University. Oh. All right. That's, that's that's go. Woo. Well, we wish each and every one of y'all the very best of luck. I have Doctor a couple of commissioners that want to talk to y'all. Uh, Commissioner Thibodeau. Uh, can I add one more thing, Mr. Thibodeau? Um, in addition to athleticism, I know that was mentioned in here. Come on to the mic. Um, sorry. In addition to athleticism, these young ladies are also on honor roll. These are AB students, so it's an important thing to recognize. Commissioner Thibodeau? Yeah, you, you've answered one of my questions. You said you're only losing two players. And Out of this group. Do you have any players that are playing AAU basketball? Yes, sir, we do. <laughs> well, oh. uh, both I'm of retired. these young ladies uh, played for the Louisiana Lightning during the summer, and some are also played with them as well. Mm -hmm. that, that'll make all the difference in the world to your team. Yes, sir. That's right. And that's one thing, too, and we mentioned that when we went to Lake Charles. For the most part, and speaking on community, most of these students um, went through elementary middle together. So our core, our starting group, played with each other from about 6th, 7th grade up. In addition to AAU, the core did. So those three played for like six years together all year long. So. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank hey, uh, look back and look for y'all next year. We'll see you again next year. Okay? Repeat. Yes, Thank y'all. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's nice. All right, uh, next item, Mr. Clark. Thanks for moving special resolution of recognition to Terry Q, Mind, Body, and Soul Salon, and Community Volunteer. So moved uh, so move by Commissioner Bowman, second by Commissioner Williams. We'll all rise. <laughs> In the name and by, and by the authority of the Cattle Parish Commission, resolution proclaiming Terry Pugh Day, whereas the Cattle Parish Commission desires to give appropriate recognition to those individuals of Cattle Parish who aspire, strive, and excel, and, and who in doing so reflect much honor and prestige upon this parish. And whereas Terry Pugh, owner of Mind, Body, and Soul Salon, and the founder of Setting the Standard Barbering and Natural Hair Academy is such an individual, and whereas Ms. Pugh moved from California to Shreveport in 1990 with dreams of owning her full-service beauty salon, she never dreamed of the opportunities she would be given to give back to this community. Ms. Pugh has used her business to give back to the community by hosting poetry nights, public seminars, community backpack drives, AIDS awareness drives, parking lot concerts, and free haircuts to the community. And whereas Ms. Pugh is very proud of her business and civic accomplishments, she is still most proud of her daughters, Taylor and Zoe. 
Terry understands that success consists of knowing your purpose in life, growing daily to achieve excellence and sowing seeds into others so they can obtain the same benefits. Terry, do, Terry does this daily by guiding and helping others to discover their purpose so that they operate with a spirit of excellence and intent. Now therefore be it resolved by the Cattle Parish Commission this third day, 2014, to be Terry Pugh Day in Cattle Parish, Louisiana, in hearty and sincere appreciation and mad admiration of this lady's outstanding business and civic accomplishments. And it calls upon all citizens of this parish to join in ongoing expressions of recognition. Signed, Douglas Dominic, President, Lyndon Johnson, Vice President, Gerald Bowman, Matthew Lynn, and Michael Williams, Commissioners. I just want to say something uh, before Ms. Pugh said something. Um, you know, we talk a lot about economic development and things of that nature and, and going outside of the area, but it's so great to see um, someone to come in the community and build from within and make a difference. You know, she's not only having her own business, but she now has a school to educate and that's economic development because now these persons and these students will be able to go out into the, in the community and be productive citizens as well. And um, I just want to thank you for all of what you've done. Um, you're a star in our community in Queensboro and my area, District 5, always needs some type of good positiveness going on and you are just that what we need. So I just want to thank you so much. and. Um, Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Wow, I want to thank you all for this recognition. Um, I am truly, truly, truly grateful. Um, <clears throat> one of the people that I, I, I do admire the most who's no longer with us was Councilman Joyce Bowman. Um, one of the things she taught me as a leader is that you cannot operate in fear and that you must have vision. And um, if you're, a, if you're a leader that's scared, you're not really a leader, you're a slave to your community. And um, so I want to thank you guys for recognizing me because one of the, I think one of the most important things is, is that we as community leaders have to realize that we, we're growing people, not just leading them. And we have to give in to them the things that they need to flourish and to, to, to germinate and plant seeds into other people so that other people can grow. So I just want to say thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. We have a, yeah, hi, we have a couple of commissioners that want to uh, address you, if that's okay. Commissioner Williams. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a little more personal to me than others. Um, uh, Terry is the epitome of what America uh, calls the American dream. Uh, oftentimes, when we see the news, we read the reports about uh, mothers that are single mothers being on welfare opportunity that she instilled in her daughters that uh, you have to accept personal responsibility and you can't cop out on things about not having a man around but you have to roll up your sleeve and get in the trenches and go to work uh, not only this this is an opportunity from welfare but an opportunity to work fair to get people off the welfare road where people don't have to be subsidized because everybody needs their hair done now not only did she start in the beauty and barber she added a school we can use those resources that come from workforce development to get people off of welfare and get them to work and, be, and, and, and believe in the American spirit of America and the entrepreneurial spirit of owning your own business. And I want to commend her for being a mentor to our young women who need a mentor more so ever in America they need it now. Not only is she a Christian woman and her values and her standards, her office is called Setting the Standards. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have to set a higher standard for our young people in our community. Stop giving them a cop out because no man ain't around, because your daddy ain't around, because drugs and violence and crime. They didn't, de they didn't define you because they didn't design you. God did it. Right. So oftentimes we have to uh, promote a spirit of <coughs> promote a positive image in front of these young people, in front of our children, because what they see is what they become. So I just can't say enough about hope this spirit uh, resonate throughout Queensburg, throughout the community, that you have more schools all over this community where people can promote the entrepreneurial spirit 
and being off of welfare <coughs> to workfare. And uh, oftentimes you hear on the national level, they say people don't want to work. That's not true. That's not true. But they want to be on welfare all their life. That's not true. That would be a war on poverty, not a war on poor people. Mm -hmm. we, we got it wrong. We need to have a war on poverty, <coughs> not a war on poor people in poverty. Because poverty has no color and no race. People are poor, they're hurting. So, hey, keep up the good work. Keep the momentum going. And also, also keep that poetry going over there as well. Mm -hmm. I like poetry as well. So, <laughs> commend you on the work you're doing and hope this do, help you see you do more things in our future in our community. Thank you so much. All right, um, Commissioner Lynn. Terry, thank you for being my friend. We, we, you and I both opened up businesses at about the same time and would visit each other at each other's company, and you were certainly an inspiration for me, and I'm, I'm proud of you for keeping on going, and, and thank you for being the wonderful person that you are. Thank, thank, you. thank you for your friendship. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Terry, thank you for being here today, and I thank you for being Matthew's friend because he doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> although that's a good thing, but, uh, he doesn't have too many. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, but, <laughs> Terry, to be honest with you, I think this is about the first time I've seen where we have three commissioners uh, making a resolution. We have Bowman, Lynn, and Williams. So it just shows your uh, dedication, your popularity, everything that you've done for our community. So we just thank you for being here and ask for you to continue to keep up the work in Shreveport and Cattle Parish. And may God bless you. Thank you, President Dominique. Have a good day. You guys have a great one. Thank you. Next item, Mr. Next, Clark. a special resolution declaring April National Parish County Month. So moved. Uh, I have a motion by Commissioner Lynch, seconded by Commissioner Bowman, and we will uh, vote on that one. And that passes. And Commissioner uh, Todd, if um, I can't remember, we voted on the one for Terry Pugh, Pugh but that was accepted by acclamation also. So we'll move to the next item. Next we move to communiques and reports. Does anybody have any communiques and or committee reports? I'm the I just Epperson. Commissioner Epperson. Timberline subdivision and Deer Creek estate subdivision will hold our annual spring cleanup. Uh, we thank the parish for helping us participate in that endeavor, bringing out the large trash bins and uh, we're looking forward to a very successful uh, awareness on uh, neighborhood, and community, and surrounding areas cleanup. This weekend? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Saturday, uh, this Saturday, April the 5th, 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. We have the uh, the uh, constable will be there. Uh, we have copies of property standards laws available, neighborhood covenants as well as uh, pertinent ordinances that affect uh, neighborhoods as far as uh, property standards, clean cleanliness, and uh, safety and criminal justice. And thank you, Commissioner Everson. Commissioner Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, over in the uh, Lakeside Islandale community, I see what the Shreveport Housing Authority is doing a lot of uh, groundbreaking uh, over in that area to re revitalize, rebuild, and repopulate. I would like for this administration to reach out to the director, uh, Shreveport Housing yeah. Authority, and give us an update on what type of uh, development is going on in that area. I see they have some on the uh, eight, but I like to know the long range plan. Uh, I see they, they, at the Naomi site, they're building something. I just don't know what it is. I just like to be informed of what's going on in that area. Thank you. That's it. Mr. Lucky, will you take care of trying to answer yes, sir. those questions for Commissioner Williams? Commissioner Lynch? Yes, my question is to Attorney Frazier. I, I, I've gotten, I think, two emails this week from what I'll just refer to as a couple of town criers. Uh, and in <laughs> one of them, there was a question about parish employees, uh, I guess, basically campaigning on behalf of the upcoming bond issue. So I know there's, I'm not really sure. Is there something in place, and you can get it to me later, but is there something in place that addresses parish employees and campaigning? Um, Commissioner, we've discussed this before. I know we have, and, but I don't um, remember. No, no, no. What I was about to say was that um, I'm not sure if it's just something that's been communicated orally yeah, or um, if there's Lord. a written policy, but I will get the, the law and the policy 
Okay, thank you. Commissioner Cox, uh, two things piggyback on Ms. Lynch. It's a shame that some people that who are living in Caddo Parish is trying to, to throw some light on a bond issue that we have coming up that they're not putting the whole story out there, and that's a shame. Uh, but that's all I'll say about that. Uh, also, Caddo Parish uh, lost a entrepreneur this, this week, Mr. Horn, who was yeah. been before us many yeah. times. Yeah. He built a great business with the relay stations, both north, south, east, and west. And uh, he started from nothing, and he built a business that even today, uh, if you talk about the relay stations, it's those uh, chicken fried steaks they got. <laughs> and they're good, believe me, they're good. And uh, just want to say that he did pass away. The services will be tomorrow. And uh, like keep the good. family in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you. You way away. And Commissioner Everson? Oh, uh, <clears throat> A lot of the youngsters may not know, but Al Bolton Saw passed. That. Yes. Uh, oh, I remember him as Bob and, 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 and not Bob and his brothers, Al's Correa. Right. right. Uh, when TV was black and white. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's keep his family in our Thank you. Yes, I saw that too, Commissioner Jefferson. Okay, uh, next item, Mr. Burke. Adopt the minutes of the regular meeting held on March 20th. So, we have a Motion by Commissioner Johnson and seconded by Commissioner Williams to adopt those minutes. Please vote. And that passes. Next, we move to pu public hearing on ordinances. Ordinance number 5388 of 2014, amending the budget of estimate revenues and expenditures for the Economic Development Fund to provide an appropriation of 15000 to fund the Caddo Bozier Film Office for 2014. Okay, declare this matter open for public hearing. Is anybody who wishes to speak in favor of this ordinance? If so, you can come forward to speak in favor. I see none. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak against this ordinance? I see no one who wishes to be speak against this ordinance. At this time, I declare this public hearing closed. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Ordinance number 5389 of 2014, an ordinance to repeal, reenact, and renumber Renumber portions of section 18-8 of Article 1 and General of Chapter 18 of the Code of Ordinances. Is there anybody here wishes to speak in favor of this ordinance? If so, you please come forward. Is there anybody who wishes to speak against this ordinance? At this time, I declare this public hearing closed. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Ordinance number 5390, 2014, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator or designee to sell parishes tax interests. Declare this public hearing open. Does anybody wish to speak in favor of this ordinance? Does anybody wish to speak against this ordinance? Declare this public hearing closed. Move to the next item, Mr. Clark. Next, we move to ordinances for final passage. Ordinance number 5388 of 2014. You going to read it? Well, we just so, read it. Right. <laughs> okay, I have a uh, motion by Commissioner Cox, seconded Second. by Second. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Thibodeau, um, does the maker wish to speak for a second? Uh, basically, y'all were all handed out a uh, brief overview of over the uh, last couple of years up here in Shreveport, what the movie industry has done for us, the jobs that it has brought for us. And this is basically just a drop in the bucket of what we get in turn on this $15,000. Uh, Arlena has done a uh, not a great job. She's done an exact uh, a, a, example of couldn't do it any better i don't think anybody can do what she does to bring movies in here uh coordinate with millennium coordinate with with set designers and stuff like that so this fifteen thousand dollars keeps us moving we are in the top five of most movie trade uh, magazines as the place to go for uh to make movies the soto parish is uh, i didn't even know that they were uh, filming salem right in the, in the soto parish so, but we've had movies here and uh, TV sets uh, here as well. This is an industry that's not going to go away. We are in competition now with other countries, like uh, you know the uh, the Expendables. Everybody thought that was filmed in the United States. It's not. They are taking movies across seas now. So anything we can do to keep this business going, we need to support it because that is jobs in this area for people. Who are looking for jobs? Thank you, uh, Commissioner Thibodeau. 
I agree with Commissioner Cox. My, my only question is, I think the last time we spoke about this, I had asked if this ever went uh, before the Economic uh, Development Committee, and at that time it had not. And since I'm on the committee, I'm wondering if it has, did, it, did I miss a meeting or, uh, and, and, and I'm just concerned about our process, that's all. I think I agree with everything you said, but I think it's important that we keep our process uh, set up the pro proper protocol. Uh, we can't pick and choose, you know, what process we're going to use on one ordinance versus another, and that that was my question. If it hasn't gone before the economic development committee, why not? Um, who is, is it? John is it true? I second. Yeah. Okay. It has not been before you guys. No. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Lynn. <laughs> at the um, introduction of this, I agreed to the introduction, but at the same time, I had a series of questions. I believe I had seven questions, and I was promised the answer to those questions before today. These were questions that would normally be vetted in the Economic Development Committee. I, to this day, I have yet to receive the answers to any of those questions. and based on the fact that we do support the movie industry by contributing to um, the, the film festival that we have and that we do donate all parish buildings and land to anybody who wants to make a film free of charge. I do feel that we contribute uh, to the film group and to filming in Louisiana and the taxes that we credit to the film industry is felt by every taxpayer, me included. Um, and I will not be able to support this primarily because the questions that I was promised an answer to, I have yet to receive. That's all. Commissioner Cox, uh, first off, if you give me those questions, I'll make sure, I don't know who you asked it, asked it from or who or, I mean, as of this moment, when we talked about this a couple weeks ago, I didn't receive anything from you mm -hmm. stating, and I would have got it for you. But as far as Mr. Uh, Tibigo, this was in our budget last year and I think the year before. It just wasn't in there this year. And that's why I brought it up. Now, if it pleases the uh, commission and y'all want to run it back through the, through the proper channels, that's fine. I just look at it like we've already, we did it for two years. We already do it this year. And that's why I brought it up. I believe in the, the industry. I believe it's, it puts people to work. And this, this 15000 that goes to Arlena's department is for communications, mo mo more than anything. It's putting us out in front of people. So they will come and take, uh, take advantage of the taxes and the opportunities that we have in Louisiana. New Orleans is back up and operating. Oh, yeah. And they're getting them right and left. So we can either do what we can to keep it here, or we can see it fly away. And believe me. Hollywood is no different from any other business. They can either make it here or make it somewhere else. I think we need this, this amount of money to go to uh, a department that keeps us in front and keeps us in the trade magazines and keeps us to where we can say business is coming here through the movie industry or through the commercial industry or through the high tech industry of animation because we, are, we have an open door, okay? So that's my primary. But if if it pleases this this board and y'all want to kick it back to the uh, proper committee, I wouldn't mind. But I, I really wouldn't want to see this take it over another month to get done. Thank you. Okay, um, Commissioner Williams, you haven't spoken yet. Yeah, I'm just you know I think uh, the maker of the motion uh, uh, made it made his point very clear. Uh, however, I think Commissioner uh, Thibodeau, you do have merits to what you said. However. In light of this has had been in our budget. In order for us to be the new Hollywood city of the new south, we are competing in a global economy for this industry, the movie industry. So fifteen thousand dollars is pennies on the dollar compared with the economic impact the movie industry has made in the South in Shreveport. Uh, I think it's an insult to uh, to ask all these or questions <coughs> and questions and, and rhetoric. Uh, to uh, postpone this 15000 for the millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, that they have made over the years. Matter of fact, it's not enough uh, to be able to market 
cattle carriage and put them on those spots on TV cause a lot of the spot on the TV called 10 times more than $15,000. Come on guys, let's step outside the box. Let's be innovative. And I know we have the power to change, to move, but uh, the partisanism need to stop. I think it's time that we look forward, uh, move our city and our parish forward. We've done a lot of great things here, a lot of positive things. And uh, protocol is important to what we, how we operate up here. However, uh, being that it's part of our uh, budget process, they've been in the budget over the years, maybe it's an oversight like, uh, like the FEM Commission was. However, I think it's a good, it's a good policy to support the film industry here in movie industry. Maybe one, maybe one a day, uh, maybe one of you will be a movie star one day. You never know what the future may hold. So, uh, I think it's a good piece of legislation. We need to move forward and create an environment and an atmosphere, economic and business opportunity. Because tourism, and entertainment is here to stay. It's one of our most billion-dollar industry in this state and in this city. Uh, put a pennies on the dollars would be foolish if we didn't pass this today. Thank you. Commissioner Lynch. <laughs> Where do you start? Well, I'm vacillating between calling for the question and saying what and making this friendly amendment to uh, to the ordinance, which I think I'm going to go with the friendly amendment. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on the one, two, three, the third, whereas. If we could just stop it at, in order to market and promote the area, period, because it says for locations at the Expo Film Trade Show in Los Angeles, which was last week. So if this money can be, uh, you know, used for the overall promotion and marketing of the film industry as opposed to at a specific event or location, then I, I'll support it. Second. And agree. I agree. Okay, so I have a, uh, a motion. It's a friendly amendment. If you'll accept it, they'll I will. accept it. Okay. All right. Um, we're still on board. Commissioner Tipton has already spoken, so we're going to go to. Uh, okay. I will. No. Well, I got to go to me. Commissioner, jo John. Commissioner John. Johnson first, and then Commissioner Evans today. <laughs> Call for the question. Commissioner Johnson has called for the question. <laughs> I have a second. Second. I'm second by Commissioner Everson to call for the question. All right. Commissioner Johnson beat Commissioner SBA to the call. Okay, please vote. And everyone has voted and that passes 10 to 2. So now we will vote on the original ordinance. As amended. As amended. As amended. The friendly amendment. Please vote. What is it? The, the amendment. What we it's good. Yeah. It's good. You're supposed to ask questions and talk about rhetoric. <laughs> 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 well, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Bowman and uh, Commissioner Lynch, you need to vote, please. Oh, Bowman, we got you. Audience. Okay. Commissioner Lynch, okay. Well, you got it. 11 to 1. Sure, Okay. Okay. The next item. Next we, <laughs> next we move to ordinance number 5389, ordinance to repeal, reenact, and renumber portions of section 18. Dash eight, Article One, Chapter Eighteen, the Code of Ordinances. So moved. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Williams, second by second by Commissioner Lynn. I have no discussion. Please Hello. vote. Yeah, you do. Commissioner Johnson. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what is this. I can tell. That's why I was waiting. Okay, so hang on one second. second All right, <laughs> Commissioner Lynn says he can explain this, and obviously well, Robert. Robert. Robert, can you come Robert. up? Robert. It was quick. Yeah, let's get it from the horse's mouth. We don't, we don't need lines. share a lot. Yeah, I won't rob This is the levy thing. Blame you. Actually, it's Mr. Dumache still. Well, it's public work, so whoever is most efficient in reading or knowing about it, <laughs> that's what I want to know. In, in, in summary, it's basically there's uh, updating the maps that our ordinance reflects. Uh, they did these maps about three years ago, I guess, and, and uh, They've all been approved and such, and they just create uh, new new These floods. These are female so maps? Yeah. The female maps? They're female okay. maps. Okay. okay. please vote. That passes towards zero. Ordinance number 5390-2014, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorized person administrator designated to sell tax interest. So moved. 
Moved by Commissioner Cox, second by Commissioner Johnson. See no discussion, please vote. <clears throat> And next item, Mr. Clerk. Next, we move ordinances for introduction by title. Ordinance number 5391, 2014, providing for the issuance, sale of general, of general obligation refunding bonds, series 2014 of Cattle Parish, prescribing the form, fixing the details, and providing for the rights of the owners thereof, <coughs> providing for the payment of the principal of and interest on such bonds and application of the proceeds thereof for the refunding of certain bonds. Ordinance number 5392 of 2014, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator to designate sale tax interest. Next, we move to work session minutes, ratify the March 31st minutes. So moved. Motion Sorry. by Commissioner Williams, second by Commissioner Johnson to ratify the work session minutes. Please vote. That passes 12 to 0. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Next, we move to resolu resolutions. This was delayed from March 20th. Resolution number 9, providing for the Appointment of Poet Laureate for Cattle Parish. So moved as amended. Moved, second. moved by Commissioner Lynn, second by Commissioner Bowman. See no discussion. Please vote. <clears throat> that passes 11 to 1. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Next, we move to resolution number 11, 2014, urging and requesting the state of Louisiana to adopt special signage to designate streets and highways named for veterans, active military duty, or military activities. So move. Moved by Commissioner Epperson, seconded by Commissioner Williams. We have a discussion. Oh, Mr. Yes. Commissioner Epperson wishes to show everybody oh, and explain right. briefly a little bit about what, what exactly we're going to do. So, Okay, if we look at the color scheme, the blue background, white fonts, white piping, red and white stripes symbolizing the American flag, five stars symbolizing the five branches of the military services in the United States of America. The center star will always designate the alphabet of the particular uh, military organization that the veteran was involved in. In this case, it's an A. It'll be M for Marines, A F Air Force, N for Navy, C G for Coast Guard, etc. Uh, if you, some of you may have been uh, traveling down I-20, you see the Terry Bradshaw Expressway, white piping, olive drab green, which I call it. The Korean War Veterans uh, Parkway, white piping, olive green. The uh, Purple Hearts uh, Veterans Parkway, the same deal. And uh, we would like to see uh, the sacrifices that these men and women in these military campaigns be distinguished among our signage. Thank you. Okay. Give me one again. Um, please vote. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Everson. <clears throat> well, that passes 12 0. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Resolution number 12 of 2014, urging and requesting the state of Louisiana support House Bill 239, capping payday loans. So moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Williams, seconded by Commissioner Baker. See no discussion. Please vote. And this obviously will be drafted by the legal and approved by legal so that we can get this to Ms. Godfrey, Helen Godfrey Smith, if it passes. So please vote. And that passes 12-0. We have no old business. We move to new business. Confirm appointment of Carlos Colon, Cattle Parish Poet Laureate. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Lynch. Second by Commissioner Lynn. Uh, see no discussion. Correct, Bowman. I'm oh, sorry. Moved by Commissioner Lynch. Seconded by Commissioner Bowman. Thank you, Mr. President. And I would just like to acknowledge the president, presence of Mr. Colon with us today. If you will just uh, yeah, he's good. And, uh, Thank you for being here today. And also, is this Barbara? Yes, the uh, head librarian at Broadmoor, I believe. Poetic X. And the Poetic X. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Please vote. That passes 12 0. Next item. Confirm reappointment of Maxie Smith, Lakeview Waterworks District. Term expired March 17th. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Johnson, second by the Chair. Please vote. I have one other item, Commissioner Epperson. Uh, <clears throat> we passed, uh, we had, what, how many resolutions added today? We had one, uh, we had two. 
I will be going down to the uh, state legislature this Monday. I don't know who else will be going, but if we can uh, have the resolution prepared, uh, I'm familiar with the process down there. I'll get with Roland with our police jury association, friends with the LMA, uh, friends with labor, and uh, make sure that they will give support to the items in which we will be advocating in behalf of the state legislature. If you get that to me, I'll be leaving uh, early Monday morning. If you can get with um, Ms. Frazier to get that done, Mr. Commissioner Epperson, that would be great. I see no nobody else has anything further. Good job. Mm -hmm. My wife hates it. So let's go and have a Hey, Jerry. Oh, yeah. You want to call it? So I look forward to my first. <laughs> Just smell on one side. Just smell on the other side.